paper was like gold in medieval times. I want tobacco. Sugar. That everything we thought we knew about the world might turn out to be completely wrong. I would like to have a mom and a dad, and I would like kids, other kids in the house, and if they went to church. Every year, South Mississippi holds an adoption picnic where prospective parents meet children who need families. I could search from now to the end of time Never find another you I want a family to be there to look upon whenever I'm graduating. Have somebody to pat you on the back and say how proud they are of you, you know, and that's my daughter, you know, and stuff like that. Someone to give my love to. I'm really optimistic. There's supposed to be at least, uh, I don't know how many children uh, that are free for adoption are going to be there, uh, 50 or more, up to 100, maybe 50 to 100. So I'm really optimistic that we're going to find some child there. Someone to give my love to. Mississippi has thousands of children in care. At any one time, over 300 are up for adoption, most of them school age and teenagers. The problem is getting families to take on older and often damaged children. South Mississippi has been holding state-run adoption picnics for five years in a bold initiative to get potential parents to meet these children. It's the brainchild of adoption specialist Sylvia Sessions to recruit families who are willing and able to take on older children. Our children are all going to have problems. They're going to go through a lot of pressure, and we want to have families who've already dealt with some type of crisis or some problem issues in their marriages and have survived this. Because if they come in and they say, you know, we just always had this sweet little happy marriage and we've never had any problems and we agree on everything, then I think, oh, you don't need one of my child children because your life is never going to be the same again. Most of the children that are at the picnic will be school age or older. Sylvia tries to attract as many potential parents as possible to the picnic. Anyone thinking of adopting is invited. They'll still undergo rigorous checks and committee approval to actually adopt a child, but the picnic draws them in. And um, I know we, we're going to have around 50 or 55 children, and really this is going to be the biggest and the best picnic we've ever had. I think we're, gonna, we're having a lot of children that are being freed for adoption, and I think there's a lot of you that probably will find kids there that you are interested in. I can take a picture and the write-up of a child and, and show a family and they can read the problems that this child's had and the experiences that they've been through and they may say, no, I can't take this child. And then they can come to the picnic and they see the child and interact with them. It just puts a whole different light on it. And people that I never would even think about taking certain kids because of all the problems they have. We have families that decide these are our kids. I just got a picture I want to toss around a little bit. I'm in love. <laughs> and I just, y'all again. And I just want to toss this picture around, let somebody else see some, something that's coming to this picnic. Oh. He is, if, if somebody else don't take him, I'm taking him. <laughs> how old is he? This is one that's going to be the big head. So cute. We really got some neat kids. 
But I'm in love with this one. Where's my mom? Yeah. What's his name? Eight. His name is Jeffrey. He just got free for adoption. He has just took my heart and just grabbed it and just run with it. I don't know. I still don't know how I didn't bring him home with me. <laughs> he is adorable. He is adorable. I don't know who's Dog. getting him, but somebody better start picking him out, or I'm gonna have to take well, him. I said we'll take him. him. <laughs> Jeffrey is seven years old. He's lived in 11 different foster homes and shelters since he was four. He's had severe behavioral problems. But at the picnic, no one will know about his past. That's me. <laughs> And that's me too. And why is Jeffrey happy in that picture? Because I like the home I'm living in. That's a rocket. What do you want to do with a rocket? Jeffrey's social worker, Kim, will be taking him to the picnic. Many families would be scared off by his problems, so the picnic could be his best chance of being adopted. Okay. These are just hard. Hearts. What do hearts mean? Love. You know how you said that you were happy right here because you like the family you're living in? Do you, um, you understand that this is just temporary, right? And that we're looking for an adoptive home for you? Hmm? Can you tell me what, what you know about an adoptive home? Will that be your permanent mom and dad? forever. Tell me about it. Mom's working in the yard. Dad's in the house. And that's me that looking at the stars. When you get in your adoptive home, will you have to ever move? Well, sometimes I'll have to move. Why sometimes? Because I have to go to school. Right. We've been trying to have a child of our own We've been married for 10 years. It's been over six years ago. And we've just really looked forward to the time fishing, hunting, well, and girl things, shopping. <laughs> so we're, we're just really excited about getting children in our home. Baseball, football, school, hunting, fishing. I don't know, there's a whole world out there. I mean, there's endless things to do. We got 10 years to catch up on. Bed wedding. How we can deal with that. Destruction of property. <laughs> That'd be a four. Philip and Paulette Hutton have been taking parenting classes for two months in preparation for adopting a child. Smearing or eating feces. Right. We both have major problems That's with that. That's gonna be a big five there. Masturbation. Uh, there'll be another high number there. I'm just really excited about the picnic, picking out the, the one God wants us to have. That would be real hard, but we're, we're Christians and we, we know God has got his hands on everything. And, you know, but really us looking at every child is gonna be very difficult to say in our hearts, no, you're not the one, or yes, you are the one, you know. Few families want to adopt teenagers, so for 14-year-old Lacey, the picnic may offer a chance to escape the system. She spent the last five years in care. All this is about four years of my life that I've been able to keep. Everything with, that I had with my mom is destroyed. I have only a portion of baby pictures. I mean, these are normally stuff that you go into any other house and a mother can pull out of her kids or scrapbooks or just silly little stuff, but I'm gonna, I just, I don't, I mean, I've managed to keep up with this, so I've done pretty good. Um, this is me at like five or four. 
um, having my birthday party with my mother near me. But as we got older, I guess she figured, well, they're older now, and I can go out and do what I want to do, which she couldn't really. And, I mean, she's, she did, like, drugs and stuff in front of us, and my brother really didn't know what was going on, but I, I did. And it, it tore me apart, it really did. Whenever I got put in the system, I worried about my mom for three years and cried myself to sleep almost every night. And whenever I finally seen her, I told her that I wanted her rights terminated. And that was the way I was going to have it. And I watched her sign the papers, and I was, I mean, I was completely fine with it. She, I mean, she really wasn't, but I was sick of crying and worrying about her. And I told her, I said, as long as you keep in contact, I will. But I'm not going to spend the rest of my life worrying about you. Lacey is now in a children's home. But until a few months ago, she was happy living with her divorced foster father. Then suddenly he decided she had to leave. I've been with him for the last four years. And then he decides, well, I'm getting married. I've had her. I think I've done what I need to do. Things aren't working out. And I think I need to start my own life. And I think she needs a mother and father. So he sent me here. And within two weeks... I found out that I was losing the only family I had and had to be sent away from them. And it kind of, it hurt me real bad. It really did. Out there, I mean, I was free. I had a normal teenage life. I was able to come and go as I pleased within a certain curfew or time. I got to interact with friends, go to football games, go to family outings. I didn't have to worry about asking a social worker or asking a house parent or having a house parent not near my side. And then I came here and it was like, I'm in this little wee box trying to get out. She's 14 and just a child. Told again in a little while in many homes, countless years. Renee Powell and her brother Evan were adopted, but not at a picnic. Now their parents, Dwayne and Lynn, want to find an older son to complete the family. I pray the Lord my soul to keep, and Lord, as I always say. I'd love to be adopted someday. My wife, Lynn, was a country music entertainer for, for years. Uh, she toured uh, all over the United States. And uh, Lynn had went to the adoption picnic and uh, told me about the kids. She went to sing there. I didn't go. And uh, so we looked into that. And uh, the more we looked, all the more interested we got. Yes, there are too many children that wait for you to care. Oh, I'm very excited about the picnic. I can't wait. These things are so great. I just love these adoption picnics uh, and the, the, the outcome of them. You know, that's what's really important. Uh, the children that are seen there and uh, it just touches people's hearts and, you know, they want to adopt them. So it's going to be neat. It's really exciting, but uh, really it's, this yeah. one's really special for us because we're looking for a child ourselves. <laughs> wow. Lynn and Dwayne already know what behavioral problems older children can have. Adopting Evan and Renee was at first traumatic. Well, when we first met them, they called us mom and dad right off. Uh oh. And <laughs> you, you're not yeah. gonna cry, are you? Uh, and uh, I don't know. <laughs> and Mike. Renee brought a bouquet of flowers and gave it to me. And oh, that was just—I I don't know. I can't explain it. It was wonderful. And then, then it really started. Yeah, they were very wild. Uh, he got pretty upset about something. I don't really know what it was about, and threw his little toy in the garbage can, and then he uh, crawled up in the little, the little play things at McDonald's, you know, the little play, playground. That big Mac in the jailhouse. 
house thing. Yeah, the yeah, big there's, a, there's a big <laughs> back you can crawl up in. Yeah, and uh, wouldn't come down. I guess it was so overwhelming that first day. Well, when we, when we left them that day, they went back to the foster home and we went to the motel and we sat down on the bed and then we just sat there and we couldn't say anything to each other. It was just like our mouth was open, like, you know. <laughs> where, where can we buy some straight jackets? You know. <laughs> Evan can't wait to have a, a brother because his sister doesn't like to play ball with him a whole lot. So he can't wait for that. Uh, Renee, um, she has mixed feelings right now. Um, just don't want another brother. He's already enough. I won't see how got from Actually, another. he's already too much. Uh, one brother? Please. I'd rather have another sister. Too bad. Would you shut up with all these too bads, blah blahs, and whatevers? But given that you've got one, what would you like him to be like? Would you like? I'd to... like him to be a lot better than Evan. Twelve-year-old Chris was given away at birth, and has lived in a succession of foster homes ever since. He wants to find a permanent home. He's been with his current foster mother, Mary Cooley, and her family for four years. Oh. This is a book that my caseworker gave me to fill out, and like my name, nickname, my favorite colors and stuff, and my birth name and my birthday, and why I don't live with my birth family. And I wrote, I don't know, but I would like to know that answer too. So you don't know, what do you know about your birth family? Because you know some things. Mm, I, I know I had four brothers, I think. And I haven't never met them, but I would like to see them. And I had a photo of my mother, but I didn't want it, so I tore it up. Do you know what she like? All I know is that she's white. That's all. I would like for him to stay, but my husband don't want to adopt no more because we done adopt four kids already. Deep down in my heart, I know he don't understand why he got to go, why the rest of them can stay and he have to go. I know he don't understand that. And I'm gonna try my level best to explain that to him when I, when I can sit down and figure it out myself. If you could choose to be spending the rest of your life living anywhere, where would it be? Probably here. And can you stay here? I don't know. Has she said anything to you about that? Not really. But you're going to the um, the picnic tomorrow, so what's going to happen there? Maybe I'll find a family. Well, we're here. It's the morning of the adoption picnic. Hopes are high for both the children and their would-be parents. to register.
Hello, Miss Lanner. How you doing? You know Lacey? Uh, no, I don't. I've heard of you, Lacey, but I've never met you. You work for Miss Because I work in Harrison. I did work in Harrison County. Yeah, go put your T-shirt on. Got to put it on. Everybody. Restroom's right in there. Watching every van and truck and car coming in and out of here. He's trying to see each tag, where they're from. <laughs> Scoping it out, huh? No, I was thinking about that on the way here this morning. I, I think the hardest thing is going to be just meeting them initially. I don't know what I'm going to say. I don't, I'm not sure I'm going to say anything. We'll see in a little bit. Excited, Jeffrey? We're almost there. What do you think? You see all those people? That's not our picnic. Yes, it is. No, it is. Do you see all these cars? This is everybody for your picnic. wrote this song especially for this picnic. Hope you enjoy it. Her day begins like the one before. Then there's a knocking at the door. It's Miss Sylvia with a smiling face has come to talk about her case here's some folks for you to meet they want a child and they think you're neat tears fall as they hug for a while it's clear she's gonna be their child for someone to care. I feel kind of awkward and you feel like you're on display a little bit. You know, you got you don't know what you should and or should do because you got all these people watching you and you're wearing this shirt that signals you out. So, I mean, it, it kind of, you're on the spot. <laughs> Michael. Oh, Michael. Oh, hi. Hi. Lynn, nice to meet you. How old are you, Michael? Oh, 14. You, you like 
brothers and sisters. Renee and Evan are adopted. What do you like to do? Play sports. You like sports? Oh, right. This guy is the captain of the football team. Is that you play quarterback? No, oh, wide receiver. Wide receiver? Is he like living in the country or? Anywhere, I guess. Anywhere? Where do you live now? In the city or? In the country. Do you? He was a little shy. Can't blame him though, you know. Michael was really a little older, a couple years older than what we're looking for, but you know. Michael is the one. Ah, what? Michael is the one. Well, we met a boy here named Michael. It's really neat. He's 14 years old. Who cares? It's real nice. It's really nice. And, uh, you know, real sweet kid. You know, seems to want a home real bad. <laughs> yeah. You want them to walk to the car? Huh? Huh? You want to ask them? Why don't you ask them? Huh? No? <laughs> oh, okay. After four hours at the picnic, Lacey leaves. Like the other children, she's no idea if she'll be adopted. That decision is up to the parents and the adoption committee. Mm, I don't know, I couldn't sleep too well last night thinking about it. Um, I, you know, I want to meet other children too to be able to make a selection of the one that I think may fit into the family. But you know, it's so hard to even consider after you've met one boy and you see that, you know, he wants a home. It's kind of hard to, you feel guilty, I guess, going home and thinking about it, you know. One thing that kind of struck me real hard was uh, we asked him, did he like living in the country or in the city? And he said, anywhere, you know, just yeah. he didn't really care as long as he had a home, you know. And that was pretty sad. Yeah. I want us to adopt them. But no, Emma don't like them. Huh. I thought she said, oh, I don't want a brother. They're brats. I've already got one. Yeah, she kind of changed her mind, though, after yesterday. Oh, good. That's one, isn't it? I just changed my mind, because I found out not all boys are brats. Oh, you think I'm a brat? You're the ugliest thing I've ever seen on Earth. Chris's foster mother had gone with him to the picnic. It had a profound effect on her. Yesterday we was at the picnic. I was just looking at all the kids lining it up, and everybody was just looking at them like a fresh piece of meat. <laughs> That's what I was thinking. I didn't want that. It come to me that he was trying to find a family just like ours. So we've been having this long. We just decided we're just going to keep him. 
all the kids agree. We all got together and we agreed and we approached my husband. He didn't give us no answer until he he had to go to work at 10. And he didn't give us an answer until he was walking out the door. He said, call the welfare officer, tell him we're going to dock Chris. And he just left us like that. We was just happy. We stayed up all night long talking about it. And Chris, he was so excited. Now that I'm going to be adopted, I decided to change my name. And I'm going to change it to Shedrick Tyrone Cooley. It's a waiting game now. I know there's a chance we may not get him, and but I hope it's more in our favor than not, so. We thought in the beginning we wanted him, you know, but then after Saturday, because he really, we really connected, but we, we still have that feeling of, you know, it's not final, and I, I guess I've still got my guard up because, you know, there's a chance we might not get him, but he's just gone haywire. <laughs> I don't know, I, I just got kind of emotional on the way home. I had a good cry on the way home. It's, I guess it's normal. I think I prayed more yesterday and today than I prayed in a day ever in my life, you know. But I just know that it's up to God and he, He's gonna give us what we need and what we don't need. And this got kind of stock from the factory with chrome bow covers. But when we get it done, we're going to paint it back like it was a silver anniversary model, you know? Six weeks after the picnic, the Powells have a new member of the family. But it's not Michael. It's my car. Your car. You my so? car. You're going to have to do a lot of work on it if it's going to be your car. I'm kidding. You think we can make a good looking car out oh, of it? Oh, yeah. We met James about, well, now he's changed his name to Mark. We met him uh, less than two weeks ago now, and uh, I shook his hand when we, the first day we met him to leave, and uh, he hugged her, you know, and then he turned over to me and said, I want to hug you too. And then he hugged me, and I was, oh, no. <laughs> and the tears kind of came out and everything, you know, so it was really neat, you know. My first thought was they were weird. They're funny. I like them. <laughs> so we sat down, and then I got this book. And I started looking, and I said, hey, I kind of like this. So, well, yeah, I am. You didn't think I was weird, did you? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe that. Why did you think they were weird? What way were weird? Well, just look at him. <laughs> <laughs> At the picnic, we heard that there were several families that were talking to Michael and maybe interested in him, as we were. But we just decided to wait until we could meet Mark first before we made a decision. And I see now that he is the better choice for this family. Here's the air conditioner things. So while we're... I don't think we're that stupid. Seems like he's happy here. And if we could make a child uh, I think this would be the exact thing we do. I mean, I he's, so, yeah. <laughs> he's perfect for us. He really is. Everything. Philip and I have been waiting on Jeffrey's write-up, his, his evaluation and his life, kind of, while he was taken out of the home. And, um, and we finally did get that. And I, I went from couldn't wait to happy, excited, to utter shock. Evidently, he's seen a lot of violent things. Now, who done them, I can't say because the write-up really doesn't say specifically. But uh, it says that he had an abusive past. The mental neglect, the, the physical abuse, the, it was just very overwhelming for me. And, and I, 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 in fact, thought at one point I didn't know if I could handle this. I, I went so far as to think I didn't know if I could do the adoption thing at all. I don't think reading, or while reading it, I ever changed my mind. I don't think that ever slipped into my mind at all.
Sylvia and I talked, she said, okay, we are, I am going to go ahead and present it to the committee. You know, I know that you're in shock. I know that this has been a scare, you know, but, but I think you can do it, you know. And then, and she also said, I think Jeffrey is a survivor. I still think that even after reading, you know, what I've read today, even though I've already read it, she said reading it new is shocking to me even. I guess Sylvia wanted to make sure that we wasn't going to back out and there was no way, uh, not after meeting him. She called back and she said, well, and, and she didn't seem all that excited about it. And, and she, I thought she was fixing to say the committee did not approve us. But she said, well, the committee did approve you. The votes were five to three in your favor. And I just said, wow. I think, I don't know if she expected me to holler or, or laugh or cry or what, but um, she, she did tell me that if she was in my shoes, she'd be scared too. Sure, I, I'm terrified. I, I'm walking into a uh, a situation where a younger, uh, a little feller's had a, a terrible past, and and we're just gonna try to give him a way out of it. So that's what we're gonna do. Jeffrey, how are you doing back there? Are you nervous? No. Are you happy, excited? Tell me about it. I'm excited. You really deserve this, don't you? Yes. Kim and Jeffrey are on their way to see Sylvia, who'll supervise his adoption placement. Later, he'll meet Philip and Paulette and go with them to his new home. We look at this book and see what you think. Can we do that? Mm -hmm. All right. Look here, what I've got. Dear Jeffrey, we are very, very happy to have you in our our. That's a big word. From family. Family. This is a book. Book. Book of. Pictures. Good, that's a big word. We love you, my and mommy and daddy. Daddy. How about that? What you think about that? That's a letter from uh, your new mom and dad. They sent you this pictures to kind of see what they're gonna look like. You in a hurry? <laughs> Turn that page up. Your new address is Philip. Philip. Paulette. Paulette. Jeffrey. Oh. Hutton. Hutton. What you think about that? Uh -huh. You think you can go by Jeffrey Hutton now and change your last name? Huh? All right. And that's your new phone number. And this is for you to keep. Oh, we have stuck it in the ketchup. <laughs> oh. oh, I'm glad I ate breakfast a while ago. Because mm. my stomach is in knots. <sighs> You're not scared? Just a little bit? It's OK. It's OK to be scared. You know, when you, any time that you're gonna be moving in and having a, a new mom and dad, it's gotta be scary. Hi, Jeffrey. How are you? Okay, good. Do you remember us? How you doing, man? You doing okay? <laughs> Huh? How are y'all? Fine. How are you? Is this your seat? You can sit right here. <laughs> We've been just talking about his book. Did you like your book we made you? Yeah. And then we went out on the playground and we were about to burn up. It's hot out there, isn't it? Too hot. <laughs> Way too hot. So what you been doing? Not much. What you been doing since the picnic? Jeffrey's got something. 
Oh, wow. And we have something for you. We left it in the car. Wow. Did you know I like plants? You did? Is this your fingerprints? Thank you. Tell her where you did this. You went to vacation Bible school? Oh, right. Way to go. This is nice. Thank you. Do you, want, um, do you want him to go get you a gift out of car? That's fine, yeah. That was really nice. Well, you ready to go? Yeah, yeah. What Jeffrey's been through, he had to let it out. That's good. I don't think they're going to see it right away. He may not, you know? You never know. He don't. He's, he's been looking forward to this. And if he feels a sense of security, stable, this, I'm not ever going to leave. You know, Miss Kim's not going to pick me up anymore and take me where, you know, somewhere else. That takes a lot of burden off of a child. What did you think when you first met us at the picnic? Was you scared? No. You wasn't? No. Did you like us right on? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, we're glad. Fun time. Okay, and I'll call you, okay, tomorrow or the next day to see how everything's going. All right? You gonna tell Miss Kim bye? Miss Kim don't know she oh, can handle her. Now, Miss Kim, did you promise you'll call her? I'm so happy for you. So happy for you. You deserve this. You're going to be a good son to Mr. Phil and Miss Paulette, aren't you? Yeah. And I'm going to check on you and see how you're doing. I'm gonna, I'll send you little letters, okay? Okay? Make me proud, okay? You guys have a safe trip, okay? could search from now to the end of time Never find another you And I'm so glad because I know you're mine Someone to give my love to Well, the first night we got home, it was very, very nice. We got in, and first thing he wanted to do was see his room. Ready? I need a smile. Can you smile? You're too sleepy, huh? Woo! It's hot, isn't it? Want to see your room? Mm -hmm. Right here. We gotta get some air on in here, girl. See all that? Look at this. You can get down here and look at everything if you want to. And there's some bunch of stuff up there. This is big. That is a big one, isn't it? At first I thought he wasn't real excited, but then he looked around a little and found what was there and he was very excited. But mostly just hugged on me and Philip mostly and we played with him. So it was, it was good. And there's your new kitty, Jeffrey. <laughs> oh. Hey, Gula. Did you miss us? Huh? I think the best moment for me was, and I don't know for Philip, he's been hugging on Philip the whole time, but. <laughs> My favorite moment was we were at McDonald's and um, and I was ordering and Jeffrey and dad was standing back watching me order and I think it hit him all of a sudden that he really does have a family and he looked at Philip and said, Dad, we, we're a family, aren't we? And Philip said, yes, we are.
I never imagined how a, a youngin can just keep your attention like that. But uh, it's it's great. It's great. He's all over me all the time, and we get on our walkie-talkies, and I'll be out here and have it in my pocket. And he says, "I need a hug." I'll take off. So it's been it's been really good. We've seen just a tad bit of Jeffrey's little anger problems. Not not really much. He's been a real fun kid to be with, and it's been real good since he's been here. Well, I'm not. And Philip, he's not worried about that a bit. You know, we'll just cross that when we get there. I wish I could forget it like that and cross that when we get there. But Philip, he's on cloud nine. Yeah, he is, and I am. But I'm worried at the same time. I really don't have any doubts or any well, I don't knows or, you know, I mean, I'm really excited about it. Good. I was gonna get back, I'm gonna let you see this when I get through. Lacey has had a surprise. Her family saw her at the picnic, and although they didn't talk to her, they want to adopt her. Sylvia is making the video for them. This is Renee and Tommy, Culpepper. She's 36 and he's 37. They live out on a farm, so they have goats, and um, they live in a double wide trailer. It's really nice. I'm really excited about it, and I'm really looking forward to going and living with them. I mean, this is what I've wanted. This, these will be my new parents. <laughs> they look really caring and nice, and they're like a gift to me in a way. You know, they, they picked me out of a whole bunch of other kids. They, they picked me. Several people that had met Lacey and said she was a swell, fantastic, a good Christian girl. And that made a difference. You know, and then Tommy and I talked about it. Yeah. And we just decided. Here I'm, I feel real comfortable, I'm real happy. Um, I've met a lot of people since I've been here. And it's been a lot of fun. I mean, it, it seems like no, I mean, it's different, you know, a lot different, but it's nice. She come in, she fixed her room. You know, she's helped Tommy at the barn with the cattle. Um, she's a, she looks like she's having no problem as far as adjusting at all. Um, I think the country life would be good for Lacey. I like it. The surroundings are different from where I used to be. The atmosphere, the life that I live now is a lot different, and I, I like it. They're all just pets of hers. They'll probably all live here till they die. I've got a life now, <laughs> and I'm really, really happy, and a lot happier than I used to be. Jeffrey has from one major timber tantrum while he was here, and it just like just scared me to death. I don't know what happened. He just kind of went berserk, kind of crazy. He went to his room and slammed the door, and they're about jerked the fan out of the ceiling. And they're about cleared his room. And at first, I was crying. You know, what am I going to do? I was trying to call people, and I couldn't get no one on the phone. So I said, well, I guess it's just meant for me to take care of this myself. And I told him that. I'm not taking it off of you. I'm the grown up. You're the child. That's the way it is, and you're going to have to live with it. <laughs> Raising children is a lot different than I had in my mind, you know. It's not, I'm not disappointed. 
but you know when you don't have children you're thinking about oh we're going to do this you know we're going to do that and it's going to be wonderful and <laughs> which it has been wonderful but you know in everyday life there's everyday things that come up that aren't always so wonderful you know I could search from now to the end of time Never find another you And I'm so glad because I know you're mine Someone to give my love to 